Hi guys, uh, this video will explain the tire contact patch and the review the tire slip. The contents will be quiz, slip tire contact patch, tire slip for traction and the brake, and the answer to the quiz, and finally conclusion. As usual, I prepare the quiz for you. Uh, what is the right expression about the slip? on the tire contact patch at the normal braking or traction. Number one, slip happens all over the tire contact patch. Number two, slip happens in the limited area of tire contact patch. Slip doesn't mean slip happens all over the area of tire contact patch. Uh, when the wheel moment is applied at the wheel center, tire contact patch has the different shapes according to the various slip ratios. Uh, here we have the rolling direction. Assuming that uh, this is the forward rolling direction, upper part of uh, this picture are the non-slip area. You can see the clear tire pattern here. A lower part of this picture with gray color are the slip area. In the lower slip ratio here, slip area gets smaller, but in the higher slip ratio, slip area gets larger, as you can see in the picture. Uh, the leading part of non-slip area has the peripheral velocity calculated by the corresponding effective radius and the angular velocity. Uh, this graph is describing the longitudinal friction coefficient as a function of longitudinal slip lambda. Uh, mu sub p is peak friction coefficient, which is similar to static friction coefficient, and the mu sub k uh, is the kinetic friction coefficient. A uh, braking force uh, will be maximized at the peak friction coefficient. If braking force is uh, big enough to overcome the peak friction force, a uh, wheel slide happens without the rotation of the wheel. Uh, you can see uh, various uh, tire contact patch. Uh, depending on its slip ratios in the brake, This graph is describing the longitudinal friction coefficient as a function of a longitudinal slip ratio, lambda. Uh, mu sub p is the peak friction coefficient, which is uh, similar to static friction coefficient, and the mu sub k is the kinetic friction coefficient. Acceleration force will be maximized at the peak friction coefficient. If acceleration force is big enough to overcome the peak friction coefficient, a wheel spin happens without the wheel movement. You can see the variation various of uh, tire contact patch depending on its slip ratios here. This graph shows the friction coefficient in terms of slip ratio. Uh, for braking and acceleration in one place. Uh, what produces the tire friction? The firstly, adhesion. Second, deformation. Third, wear. Here I use the uh, plus sign in braking and the minus sign in acceleration. Let's review the longitudinal slip ratio in the case of acceleration, explained in the uh, video number three. And this uh, slide, uh, lambda stands for longitudinal slip. V sub C stands for velocity of a wheel center. Uh, v sub F stands for tire circumferential speed under a uh, free rolling condition. Uh, capital R sub A stands for uh, effective radius in acceleration. Capital R sub F stands for 
free rolling radius without the wheel moment. Omega sub a stands for angular velocity in acceleration. Omega sub q stands for angular velocity equivalent to velocity of wheel center. In this equation, uh, v sub c, uh, which is equal to r sub a multiplied by omega sub a. Uh, this is none other than the actual forward velocity of wheel center. Uh, v sub f, uh, which is equal to r sub f multiplied by omega sub a. Uh, this is none other than the circumferential velocity due to angular velocity of the wheel. Therefore, if acceleration force is uh, big enough to spin the wheel without the longitudinal wheel movement, a slip ratio has a minus infinity value. Introducing the equivalent angular velocity omega sub q, we can express the slip ratio in terms of angular velocity like this. In the breaking, uh, new symbols are capital R sub B stands for effective radius in breaking. And omega sub B stands for angular velocity in breaking. Introducing the equivalent angular velocity omega sub Q we can express the slip ratio in terms of angular velocity like this. If the braking force is big enough to uh, sl slide the wheel uh, without the wheel rotation, slip ratio is equal to 1. In this pre presentation, a slip ratio uh, has the plus value in braking and the minus value in acceleration because minus sign is not convenient to explain braking. Uh, many textbooks are using uh, this expression instead of this expression. Uh, but I changed the equation so that the brake slip ratio has a plus value uh, like this. A longitudinal slip ratio is simply the ratio of speed of tire contact patch to speed of wheel center. You have to remember this. Returning to the quiz, uh, what is the right expression about the slip on the tire contact patch at the normal braking or traction? The answer is number two. Slip happens in the limited area of a tire contact patch. Here we have the conclusion. A slip happens in the limited area of the tire contact patch in the normal driving. Uh, slip area of a tire contact patch is increasing when the slip ratio is increasing. Effective radius is increasing uh, when braking decelerates deceleration gets bigger and decreasing when the acceleration gets bigger. Adhesion, deformation, and the wear produce the tire friction. If you watch the previous videos, you can easily understand the forthcoming videos. I explain the normal stress of a rolling tire. And also, recently, I explained the vertical and the shear stress for the rolling tires under both of braking and acceleration. In the next video, I will explain the lateral slip. See you at the next video. Goodbye guys.